The far moons of Microtech are beautiful, but cold. But I guess that's what spacesuits are for. And sometimes you just have to stop and enjoy the sunset. Because the life of a bounty hunter is difficult. And you have to grab those moments of peace when you can. It's even harder when the dev keeps messing around with things, constantly changing things up with one little patch after another. But when these things happen, I find experimentation is the best remedy. And as things currently stand, the Constellation Andromeda is a hell of a gunship to experiment with. Its default loadout consists of 52 missiles of various types and four size 4 Rhino repeaters mounted on gimbals. As well, the ship has incredible range and can easily get you from one side of Stanton to the other without refueling. And if you have crew, she has two well-armed turrets. And if you really want to make those turrets fun, load them up with distortion weapons. She carries a lot of cargo and she's capable of carrying most ground vehicles. And she even carries her own ship-mounted light fighter, which is good as a backup defense or a scouting ship on planet. This is a true and capable gunship, and it is one of my favorite platforms in Star Citizen for bounty hunting. We've flown from the Microtech system to the Stanton system, where I've taken the Call to Arms mercenary mission along with a very high-risk target bounty hunting mission on the moon's Salem. And here, we're going to conduct our first combat test of four gimbal-mounted laser light strike cannons. Cannons used to be questionable weapons in Star Citizen, but recent patches have made them much more viable. They are more efficient than laser repeaters, and I have found in testing them on the Vanguard that they are extremely powerful, both at a distance and up close. Let's see how they do for us here. After flying the much more nimble Vanguard Sentinel for the past few weeks, handling the somewhat more sluggish helm of the Constellation Andromeda is going to take a bit of getting used to. But when in the verse, you usually either find me in the Sentinel or the Andromeda. These two ships are hands down my favorite, and you're about to see why. When grinding credits and going PvE against the Verse, the Andromeda is a ship you can put confidence in. Alright, our Mark has spawned, and there's an icon around him, meaning that when we get him, we'll get paid. Now we're going to hit the thrusters and close in hard. Along the way, we're going to turn on our gimbals and set our decoys to drop three at a time. The Mark is only a Valkyrie, easy peasy, but we can see just center of starboard that we have a hurricane closing in hard. That bird could present a problem. They are nimble and hard hitting. And when they're playing guard duty, they usually charge in hot and fast, guns blazing Old West style. And I was tempted to take him out first, but we have a great closing speed on the Mark and we're getting really close to him. When bounty hunting, we are aiming to grind credits as fast as possible, so we're going to go ahead and refocus on him. The Andromeda Shields can take the beating from the other ships. In that brief pass, our four size four light strike cannons have stripped the shields right off of Valkyrie and also beat some sense into them. And now we're going to send that Valkyrie to Valhalla. There are still two left, but they don't have any chance of beating an Andromeda's substantial shields. They're more like annoying gnats, really. So we're going to go ahead, head into space, pick up another mission and quantum drive to it. Notice the power management going on on the left lower MFD. When I boosted into space, I applied full power to the engines just to help the boost power along. And then I apply full power back over to shields, which keeps them regenerating fast. The two ships pursuing us literally have no chance of hurting us, and I can take my time locking onto the nav point. And there, we'll see who the next mark's going to be. Seems the Bounty Hunter Guild wants us to take out some bandidos hiding out in the asteroid ring. I do believe the Andromeda, with these four extremely powerful size 4 light strike cannons, can handle that. Constellations are big ships, so perforce they're not going to be all that maneuverable. As always, you have to play to a ship's strengths. One of her strengths is that incredible 52 missile loadout. However, I rarely ever use them. Mainly they're just to hammer targets that want to stay just outside the primary weapons range or to take out targets hovering awfully close to a restricted area. Now the light strike size 4 laser cannons have a moderately good range at 1280 meters. That's not near as good as the size 5, but it's not bad either. 
and means you can start shooting at the bogies early. And some might note that the Andromeda's default size 4 laser repeater Rhino configuration offers a bit more range. It is important to bear in mind that the light strike laser cannon hits harder at a distance. Another significant difference is the Rhino size 4 only has an alpha of 80, whereas the light strike size 4 has an alpha of 210, making it almost as good as one of the best ballistic weapons, the Deadbolt 4. In taking down that annoying buccaneer, you probably noticed that I dropped my speed to zero. I'll often do this with particularly nimble targets because in a big ship like the Andromeda, you simply are not going to be able to dance around them. To maximize my turning rate, I'll either cut my speed down to zero or if I'm fighting in a clear area, as in not in an asteroid belt, I'll accelerate often to full speed, decouple and turn thrust down to zero, thereby forcing the attacking ship to have to chase me. And that means if he wants to shoot at me, he has to let himself get in my sights. Other way, for me, it's a winning solution. Now that's just a warden, in the hands of a skilled human pilot, an extremely capable ship. But with the AI, not so much. He gets some looks in, but with the power management set over to full shields, he just has no chance really of punching through. Alright, the Bounty Hunter Guild has offered us another VHRT target over on Salem, so we're going to head over that way. You can make the most credits doing progressive missions on VHRTs, but I haven't seen any VHRT progressive missions since the last patch. I'm hoping that's just a bug. We're on the dark side of this planet, but visibility is good, and I don't expect this mission to be any trouble. While we're closing the distance, you might be wondering why I rarely ever show ERT missions. Truth is, I rarely ever take them, and that's just simple math. We'll do some videos about taking on ERT missions in the future, but if you're just aiming to grind credits, stick with VHRTs. It takes so long to kill a larger ship like a hammerhead, compared to the mere seconds that it takes to take out the ships you'll find in VHRT missions, that it's just not worth the time. Not if your goal is just making money. Even with an Eclipse, it's not worth the effort because the size 9 missiles are so expensive it offsets your earnings by a long shot. I mentioned in the previous vid that you should hold off launching three decoys until just a few moments before the missiles hit. Now you can see why. That was three separate groups of missiles launched by three separate ships at slightly different times. Launching the decoys just two or three seconds before they hit pulled away all those missiles. You can probably see, I'd like to make straight for the mark. But the bad guys have a Gladius with them, and a Gladius can make trouble, even for a constellation Andromeda. So he's at the top of my list of things to do. Some ships are especially potent, and sometimes the weapons they shoot are especially potent. You need to develop the skill of assessing this in the thick of a fight. Some study and experience will help that out. Think of your ship as a resource. You can only use so much of those resources at a time, so spend them wisely that often begins with taking out escorts that represents a significant threat. The AI is good, and the Gladius has had time to rebuild a shield, but as you just saw, it only takes four light strike cannons a second and a half or so to strip a shield completely off. And once I have a good targeting solution, only a couple seconds more to finish the job. The AI-driven Buccaneer is more of a nuisance than a serious threat, but as he happens to be in front of us at the moment, we'll go ahead and take him out too. Rarely ever should you pass up a good targeting solution if the bad guys have just up and offered it to you. You can see with full power to shields, our shield strength is still up to nearly full. The remaining ship is another Gladius Valiant, but all by himself, I don't think his little repeaters can really do much against our ship's heavy shields. He politely swings right across my nose, so I take a few shots at him, but that's more out of a sense of obligation than necessity.
Our mark, and therefore our paycheck, is over there just six kilometers away, so we're going to go ahead and throttle over to him. The Gladius is annoying, but at this point that's all he can really manage to be. And the mark is only a Valkyrie. They don't even carry heavy weapons. It's a troop transport designed for ground assault, taking out infantry primarily. Taking him out won't be difficult, but as you're about to see, for a fair-sized ship, they are pretty nimble in atmosphere. Now if you're just grinding credits, once the mark's down, generally you just want to go ahead and leave. The big money comes from picking up your next mission and taking it out as quickly as possible. Then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. But that little Gladius has been shooting at my six all the way up and kind of annoyed with him. And I'd like to take him out, but once I swung around, he dropped back to just outside of missile range. This is new behavior, by the way. I don't know if the dev is keeping ships that you meet in the atmosphere down inside the atmosphere, or if he's actually taking steps to avoid my weapons now that he's on his own. And I don't feel like chasing him back down, so here's a place where the Andromeda's amazing missile content comes in handy. When you're carrying 52 missiles, there's nothing to shoot them two, three, even four at a time, and one pair of marksmen takes them out. One final note, the Andromeda has incredible energy capacity making it an ideal platform to carry all energy weapon loadouts. You may have noticed that the majority of time, I simply left the shields at full power, which is essential because the Andromeda is not a nimble ship and those shields need to be able to absorb a lot of hits. But even with shields at full power, the Light Strike 4 laser cannons had no trouble rebuilding their recharge. In fact, I didn't notice them slowed at all. A Light Strike loadout on a Constellation Andromeda makes for a true bounty hunting gunship.